Hello fellow option traders, this is Jeff and this is the first video that I'm going to do where I'm going to try to answer some requests that I've had on how I look at charts, what kind of indicators I use when I enter, when I exit, um, what spread or what strike or whatever else I, uh, I use and although I, um, I find it uh, flattering that people are asking about that. I just uh, can't guarantee that any of this stuff is going to work for you. It works for me, not all the time, but um, I can't guarantee that it's going to work for you. So we get that uh, disclaimer out of the way right away. And I'll show you step by step how to do this in, on the Thinkorswim platform you can use any charting platform. I'll give you enough information um, on the indicators that you can use basically any charting platform because there is no secret magic here in the way that I have this set up. Um, everything is available like uh, Stochastics and MACD. They're all available on any charting platform. So it should be pretty easy for you to use this no matter who you trade with or how you look at it. All right, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, this is what the finished product looks like um, on Thinkorswim. I use uh, three time frames that I look at. I look at an intraday hourly, as it is over here, and a daily chart and a weekly chart and I'll explain why I do that and what I look at. This is probably going to be one of I don't know how many videos I'm going to try to keep them um, logically separated and in a like a roughly 10 minute time frame don't know if I'll be able to do that. I'll also think I'm going to probably call them the option guru charts and analysis and uh, there'll be like a this will be part one setting up your charts or something like that. All right, so um, I'm just going to close this window right here and I'll show you um, I'll show you how I do this in Thinkorswim. And let's get over here. All right, now, <clears throat> first thing that I want to show you is um, the indicators themselves and I'll show you how to import them into uh, Thinkorswim. But I also have information here that will allow you to set this up yourself. So I use um, what I call a time frame of a 1 to 5. So uh, if I do an hourly, a, a daily, and a weekly, they're about a 1 to 5 relationship. Because, you know, if you take a daily and you multiply it times 5, you're going to get a weekly. And if you take an hourly and you multiply it times 5, you're going to roughly get... A day so there's I, I don't know what it is five and a half trading hours in a day I believe so um, I use that five to one time frame on my three charts and this is it here this is for the MACD and this actually tells you right here how to set your MACD and you use that on all three time frames, the hourly, daily, and weekly. If you copy below this line, for instance, if you take all of this all the way down until it says copy above this line, if you take all of this and you copy that and you paste that into um, Thinkorswim, into their um, indicators, you'll get the indicators that I get. And I'll, I'll show you all that in a minute. Same thing for the stochastic here. Um, this is a 1 to 5 stochastic. And it says for manual setup, put your percent K on 3. Put your smoothing, percent K smoothing to 1. And your percent D to 3. That's all you need to do. Um, it may not have all the colors and all that fancy stuff that, uh, that it will have when you look at it on the charts on Thinkorswim. But that's all you really have to do. And this file here will be available on my blog as a download over on the right-hand side. There's a section called Downloads, and it will be over there. 
Also, I have here this uh, simple moving average for, and I use this on my um, 50 period, simple moving average. And basically, all it does is um, it colors the line. So if the, if the moving average is higher this period than it was the last period, it colors it green. And if it's lower, it colors it red. That's all it really does. Um, these inputs here, these are inputs that you can actually change them. Um, so you can use this particular code for any um, moving average that you want to, as long as it's a simple moving average. I didn't do this for an exponential moving average because I didn't need it. But you know, if you look at this, um, you can probably put EMA in place of SMA here on the Thinkorswim's moving average, and probably get the colors. All right, so um, how do we do this? Well, let's first start out. We'll start out with a chart. Let me. I'm going to close this because we're not going to look at that. So let's just go to charts. And this is just a regular chart, and I have a, a grid here. But let's just go to a regular chart. All right, we have no indicators or anything on here um, at the moment. Um, and you can see here, here's this 50 um, simple moving average. You can see that it's green going up. And if I can see anything where it's down, um, let's go to an hour. Yeah, see, it's down here and it's showing red. And then as the moving average starts moving up, it turns to green. That just shows you how to do that one. Geez, I'm already seven minutes into this. Well, I might have to make them a little bit longer than ten minutes, I think. I'm sorry. Um, if you're going to have to live with it. <laughs> okay, the first thing we want to do is we want to um, make sure that our charts are set up correctly, the charts themselves. So these are the, this is the chart settings. And uh, for general, I have it set up like this. I don't show orders. I show alerts. I show studies. Um, I have uh, I don't snap drawings to you know like high low open close or anything like that because sometimes I can't get a drawing to sit on a chart the way that I want it to. I do synchronize my drawings across different time frames and different charts. So that means that if I put a drawing on an Apple chart on an hourly chart and I go to look at a monthly, or if I open up another chart on Apple. The drawing's going to be there. I use um, I synchronize crosshair positions too, and that just means that when you're look and you'll see it when you're looking at multiple time frames, um, you'll see the vertical and horizontal uh, crosshairs tracking on both charts. Um, show high low bubbles. Show, you know you can turn this stuff on or off. It doesn't really matter. Um, and I show the price subgraph, and I do overlap volume. And what that does is um, it gives you your volume down here on your actual chart. So you don't need an extra uh, study pane below it for your volume. It actually shows it right on the price chart. Uh, for price access, it says manual scale here, but you know I'm always flipping it on and off, on and off. So we always like to use the auto scale. 3% uh, up and 3% down. And since to use the log scale and show price as percentage or not checked, this check box down, this check mark here on show bubbles as percentage is meaningless. On the time access, um, uh, the important one here is expansion area 6 bars to the right. Now I usually like to change that to 2. And I think everything else should be okay. I'll come back and change anything if it if I don't like it. And then um, this is what I use. I use I like the white rather than um, the green filled candles. It's just a, a thing of mine for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> and of course I show the wicks and then on the common I have not changed anything on here at all 
So that's it. Um, equities, options, equities, they show volume subgraphs, so you can see this volume here, but we're overlapping it. And, and then I never look at, hardly, rarely look at charts for options and rarely futures and never forex. There's enough problems trading, dealing with what I'm dealing with right now. So it's always equities. Uh, it's where I focus all of my attention on. And um, that's what I work with. So we would say OK here. Now, um, studies, that's where it starts to get fun. So we're ready now to take a look at this. Let me uh, go back here and show you what I'm doing. I'm just going to click on this little icon here. It says Edit Studies. And you can see already that I already have these on here. I just, I believe they're turned off. Yeah, this show study box is not checked, so they're turned off for right now. All right, so how do you how do you get this in here? How do you get this into Thinkorswim? Well, if you've never done it before, it's pretty easy. All you need to do is just click the add or click the new button, and you'll come up with a nice little box like this. And then you go back to this text file that I have here. Let me just go up here and do this for you. We want this uh, 1 to 5 stochastic. Well, the first thing we want to do is the 1 to 5 MACD. And it says copy below this line. So we just take our cursor and right or uh, left click and hold it down until we get down to the copy above this line. And then we can say copy or uh, control C will do the same thing. And you cover this up, because if you highlight that when you copy in, um, it's going to overwrite that. And you can say paste. And there you have it. Ooh, ooh, we have an error here. How can that be? That cannot be. I may have to pause here to uh, check this out. OK, I don't know. There must be some syntax error in there someplace. So what I did was I just took the one that I already have working and overwrote it with, uh, overwrote what I had in my text file here. And I'll check the other ones out too just to make sure that they're okay. So now we can do it. We say copy and we go back over to the new script and we say paste. And that looks a lot better. If um, That looks a lot better. All right, then you have to give it a name. So I have, I've named it here, and Thinkorswim doesn't want you to have any spaces, I believe, in study names. I think I've uh, already stumbled onto that before. So whatever name you give to it, you can give it this name if you want. Um, or you can give it your own name. I don't care. You can call it anything you want. Let's call it Joe Blow. How's that? Underscore MACD underscore one, two, five. And that should do it. So now we have, it actually showed up over here as a uh, uh, Joe Blows MACD 1 to 5. Now I want to show you that, because um, I named them all the same so I could find them. And I'll run down here. So all of the option gurus, the MACDs, 1 to 3, 1 to 5, on balance volume, anything that I've done myself, um, I've, you know, have them all named the same so that they're clustered together here. And then I can always find them. All right. So that's that one. Now let's just make sure that let's do another new one. And let's go back and make sure that the stochastic works correctly. 
and here's the stochastic and we copy below this line and we copy above that line and we say copy come over here highlight that and say paste and we didn't get any error there that's good so now you know we can call this Joe Blow Stow <laughs> one two five. How's that? That's pretty cool. Say okay, and uh, there they are. So it says here show study, and for the Joe Blow Mac D it says show study. For the uh, the original one that I had here, it um, show study is not checked, and the same thing with the stochastic show study is not checked. And if we say OK, it should pop up on our chart, and voila, their little bugger is. OK, now this looks kind of ugly, you know, I've got to admit. So we'll probably want to go to, let's do uh, aggregation time is time daily. Let's do two years daily. All right, now. The other thing that we might want to do is back away from this a little bit so we can see things a little bit better. And the other thing that you're going to want to do with your charts is you, if you scrunch them up this way, like I'm dragging this over here, now you can see things a little bit better. You don't want them stretched out too much, but you don't want to zoom out so far that you're not going to be able to really see or read anything either. All right, so... Um, Let's go back here to where we were. Okay, now we need to do a few little adjustments. For instance, this blue line here, or this uh, whatever color, call this aqua or whatever, um, I don't use that. So I'll show you how to make that disappear. And that was uh, that was under the Mac, the Joe Blow Mac D, right? So we go to Joe Blow Mac D. And here that is. This is uh, whatever this is. It says value. I don't know what that means. So if we change the color to, well, actually, there, actually, if there's a better way of doing this, at least on Thinkorswim, we just uncheck the show plot, and it should not be there. And now it's gone. I like that. It's gone now. The other thing... Um, is this, uh, well, and we'll get into the actual indicators themselves a little bit. What else do we want to set up here? And I like the colors okay on everything. Um, the other thing that you're going to want to do, is add to your charts. I don't use them all that much, but you're going to want to add them to your charts. Is a moving average uh, exponential of 15 periods. That's going to give you your very short time frame moving average that we're going to take a look at and we're going to watch things as they, as it acts as support and resistance when we're looking at trades. Um, the simple moving average of, uh, we got the 50 here, the simple moving average of um, 100 and a simple moving average of 200. And what you're going to want to do is you're just going to want to make sure that each of those colors are different. Uh, the person's pivots, um, I'm going to take those off. I don't look at those arrows anymore. I mean, if you want to compare it, um, what we're doing, and we may do that as we go through and we look at charts, but if you want to compare what uh, PPS is telling you and what um, these other indicators are telling you, then that's, uh, that's something different. All right, so I'm going to take this other one off of here. Let me just uh, option guru SMA. Let's put this on here and let's take this one off. All right, so now we have uh, 1500, 200. PPS is turned off. Uh, advanced decline box. That's uh, that's something that I picked up. Um, from ThinkScripter's uh, website, I believe. Um, and that's this box over here, and it just tells you what's going on during the day. There's uh, 
two, since it's red, there's uh, two decliners to every one advancer is what, sort of what it's telling you right now. If it was green, it would be the other way around. All right, and then this one, um, Option Guru SMA, you would do the same thing to uh, create this study as I, as I did in the example. This one has, um, you can see down here where it says color, the plot's colors are dynamically set. Now, there's a lot of bubbles over here, and bubbles are distracting to me. But I am interested in this particular uh, moving average. So the title, when it says show title, all it does is it puts information up in this box up here. And usually there's so much information in there, it just scrolls off the edge of the screen. So why clutter it up? But I am interested in this bubble. I'm not interested in this 200 bubble over here. Um, I'm not interested in the 100. And I'm not really interested in the 15. So all we really have over here um, as far as bubbles is concerned, is the current price and the 50 MA. And that's all that I'm interested in as far as that goes. Um, the other ones like uh, Joe Blow MACD, um, if you want to change some of these colors, you can. Uh, the MACD is the one down here, and as you mess with colors, you just hit the Apply button, and you'll be able to see it over here change. So you want to get your charts all set up first. So that's that's the first thing you do. You get your studies in, you get them to look the way that you like them, and then you do this uh, cool little thing up here. As you um, on Thinkorswim, you click the studies, and you say save study set. So what that's going to do is every study that you have when you click on this little icon here for the for the studies for the chart setup you can save them with a name and then you can apply them to any time frame that you want. So it's a beautiful thing. So I have them um, over here as 1 to 5 and 1 to 3 etc etc so you can just say Joe Blow and it's one, two, five. And that's all you need to do. I get out of the way there and say, OK. So now whenever you bring up a new chart or anything, if it doesn't have a, a study already in it, you can just say, uh, go over to studies and say, I want to load, I want to load, where'd it go, Joe Blow, one to five, and it'll load that study for you. Got a phone ringing here, hang on. Well, I clicked the resume button here, but I'm not sure I'm going to resume from where I left off because now I forgot where I left off. Anyway, uh, that phone call is a whole other story, let me tell you. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, um, uh, another thing that you can do is you can save your chart settings um, along with your study settings. And the way that you would do that is you would say, save the style, which includes, a, you know, the style would be things that were set up here. All right? And it would also include, you know, like your interval and, and, and things like that, your, your time frame. So you could say, I want to save this style, and you could call it... Um, Joe Blow Charts, and click that, and it will include that study, that Joe Blow study set that we saved. So they'll always be married together. Uh, let no man put us under. Okay. Oh, what else do I want to cover here? We're almost up to 30 minutes. Um, all right, so now um, we want to have a grid. We want to set up a grid. And the way that uh, we do that is we click on, and think or swim anyway, we click on the flexible grid. And we end up with uh, this, which might look a little confusing at first, but let me kind of walk you through this. Flexible grid means that you can basically 
place these uh, place charts anywhere you want within this panel um, anywhere that it's not fixed like uh, the regular charts are like you could take this one and you could you could say oh I want to do three charts across this way but a flexible grid allows you to put them anywhere above below in between anywhere you want make them any size you want it's uh, more ironically flexible than this particular kind of grid so we go back over here to flexible grid and what this uh, little icon does is it deletes that particular chart this icon here will add a new um, grid to the right of the current one and this one will add a new grid underneath the current one and if you fiddle around with these you can add them on top or you know you can add one on top and then add one on bottom and, and it's sort of the same thing as adding one on top or whatever so you can mess around with it and you can set it up but the way that I have mine set up if you want to do it just like that and I think this will be the end of the video is um, uh, three across and then I do a little news thing on the bottom so here's what I'm going to do I'm going to add two here and I'm going to add another one. So that gives me three across. And then I only want one on the bottom. And it's only I only want it underneath this one. So I delete this one. And I delete this one. And then what happened? I want to put this over here. How did I do that? Let's right, just straight this down. No. Somehow or another I did that. Let me figure this out. Yeah, i got to figure it out. I didn't want to like stumble around on this in front of you guys. <laughs> so uh, I just haven't done this in a while. So um, you got your three charts, any charts that appear below or anywhere else, just make sure you got three across in a line here. And then let's add one below this one on this end. All right, and then um, you can see the sidebar is checked on all these. That sidebar is this sidebar here. So all we want here is news. So let's just click on the news and unclick the C, which would be chart. So that's going to be news only. And we'll drag this down here. And uh, sometimes I look at news, sometimes I don't. All right, and then this is going to be our weekly, this is going to be our daily, and this one's going to be our hourly. So we don't need this sidebar anymore because this is a chart and this one is news and this is a chart and this is a chart. So we don't need the sidebar anymore because that just takes up real estate. So I'll uncheck that sidebar box. And we're pretty much set up as far as the grid is concerned. So we would click, see this little wrench is highlighted and that allows you to configure the grid we will click on that and it'll take those boxes away that allow us to configure the grid. If we want to reconfigure it, we just turn it back on, turn it off, however you want to do it. All right. So remember when I told you about the style. So let's go up here and let's, we'll click on this and we'll say load style and let's load Joe Blow charts here. Now, uh, it's loaded here, but there's nothing in here. So let's bring up Apple. And there you have it. Everything that you had in there before, the studies and the style and everything is right here. And we want an hourly chart here. So we can go here and... And we want to do intraday, and let's do 30 days for one hour. All right, now this also shows after hours. and That's the way we had it set up in our chart settings was to show after hours trades. Apple is very active Apple hours after hours, and I like to watch that. The other thing we want to do is we want to link all these charts together. So we're going to pick out red. For our link and if we pick this one out and change it to red voila well how did CF get in there uh, just a second here I know why 
and make that red. So we'll change this back over to Apple. And then on this one, we will say we want to, we want daily, and let's say two years daily. And then we check this the auto scale, and we need to, what do we need to do? Remember, we need to load the style. And we want to load Joe Blow charts, and there's the daily. Let's do the same thing over here. First, we'll load the style. Uh, Joe Blow charts. And then we'll change this to daily. And we'll say five years week. Okay, there. Now we're all set up. Let's change this. Let's link this to that so we get the Apple News. So whenever we change anything here, we want to go take a look at Baidu. Everything will all change at once after we get the data, of course. All right, so we're at 31 minutes now. I think that's it. Uh, we have our grid all set up. Um, the next video, we'll take a look at what I call my A-plus list, and then we'll go through it, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you how I take a look at this. And, um, and then we'll take it from there and see where it goes. All right? Uh, thanks for watching, and happy trading.